And so next, we're going to have Nilsa Phillips, housing coordinator with Urban Pathways, come up to speak. Morning, everyone. Buenos dias. What do we want? When do we want it? Thank you. My name is Nilsa Phillips. I work for Urban Pathways. Um, I've been with them for over 16 years. <laughs> I currently hold the position of Central Intake Housing Admission Coordinator. Um, previously, I had been administrative assistant, cook, and a case aide. Urban Pathways provide homeless services and support supportive housing for single adults, many of whom live with a mental illness. As the Central Housing Admission Coordinator, I receive the referrals and review the applicants for all of our supportive housing programs. I route various funding streams and that their housing packets are complete. This is no easy task. It involves multiple steps and many different stakeholders, including staff across more than 30 shelters who provide referrals, or program staff who meet with the applicants and the client themselves. I am the only person at my organization doing this work. If I did not show up, people in need of supportive and affordable housing will not receive placement across our 782 beds. Yet my wages do not match the critical nature of my position. My wages are set by the city, but I make just 70% of what I would make if I work directly in the government. We need human services workers, but it is hard to recruit and retain when government pays so little. High rates of staff turnover across our programs and the shelter staff who make referrals has made my job significantly more difficult. Having multiple staff vacancy and constant new staff who we need to train to review applications slow down the process required for the clients. This ultimately has a negative impact on the people we serve who are waiting to get an apartment of their own. These individuals have typically been waiting for months, some for years, to get their housing. This is unfair and not necessary because staff turnover can be addressed with adequate pay for our work. I enjoy the work that I do and I'm passionate about ensuring every New Yorker has a home. I put a lot of time and energy into my job to ensure I do it well. I love seeing the success of the people that I work with and helping them move forward with life after ending up in a bad situation. The gratitude of those I have helped is very rewarding. It's a good feeling to get a phone call from someone who has moved into their housing and wants to share how much they love it and how it has changed their life. Getting people into housing is the most important thing we can do to end homelessness in our city, especially as concern rights over increased evictions due to pandemic. Yet myself, I'm struggling to make ends meet with extremely high rate of inflation and being impacted by. As I work to get members of our community into safe, affordable housing, I myself am facing to get an apartment where I could pay. We need the major to step up and fund a 5.4% COLA in this year's budget. The human service sector is going on three years without a COLA during a time where we are in need more than ever. Without that 5.4% COLA on our city contract, there will also be a disparity between the staff at every single organization who work on city and state contracts. Since the state has provided a COLA for our workforce, this will mean the staff who work at supportive housing programs, I place or clients at will be a get a raise, but I will not. I, this will create an unfair situation for all organizations who will both type of contracts. I hope the mayor will do the right thing and fund a 5.4% COLA for essential workforce who deserve it. Just pay.